Hi friends, so we are into our second lecture on risk based engineering uh, under a IIT initiative called National Program on Technology Enhancement Learning. And uh, I am Professor Varde from Homi Bhava National Institute. In the previous lecture, uh, we uh, went through what is risk, what is reliability, what is the role of reliability into risk uh, management or risk assessment. And we also saw uh, some accident scenarios. Uh, why? Because accidents provide a very good uh, insight into learning so that we can reduce those same mistakes or lapses in our, uh, and of course, uh, improve design and operation of our uh, operating system. Now, uh, because uh, probabilistic risk assessment is at the core, um, it is proper to, to uh, um, see historical developments or perspective on probabilistic risk assessment methods. As I mentioned, the deterministic approach uh, is a traditional approach. And I think it has done, as far as the nuclear plants are concerned, uh, this approach has really uh, done wonders. Uh, even we can say that uh, three accident, major accidents have happened in last uh, um, maybe uh, 40 or some years. Um, but every accident has given us a learning opportunity. And uh, uh, it is for everyone to see new and modern system development and then uh, reduction in risk has been the witnessed and I think there is a consensus that uh, nuclear industry is the safest industry. The most of the uh, 430 plants have level 1 PRA model and some plants have even level 2 PRA model. What is level 1, level 2 we will go into detail in the coming slides. And uh, now there is a growing interest in development of level 3 PRA. In fact, many, here also many plants, they would have developed, not many, quite a few would have developed level 3 PRA also. But again, every country has their own uh, this thing. So, uh, but in India, there is a uh, very active program going on and uh, level 3 PRA um, is being developed. Apart from nuclear, the space and process and chemical industry has also been using PRA. PRA is ex extensively used as part of risk-informed approach to complex safety issues. So we can see that. Okay, so this approach, being at the core of risk-based approach, uh, has a lot of promise to be delivered. Now, so far, whatever discussion we had uh, in our this lecture, it was reliability. Uh, it was a, uh, the, uh, the functional factor was time, okay? So reliability uh, for meeting the mission, okay? But there is another connotation to reliability and that is our stress and strength interface, okay? So uh, traditional approach to, uh, traditional ap approach to having assessment of safety was factor of safety. Uh, so factor of safety is nothing but ratio of uh, mean strength and mean stress uh, of the uh, material component, whatever is the subject. Uh, but then these were point estimates. Uh, so again, here the uh, probabilistic methods, they provide a improved platform uh, for capturing the uncertainty and after ca capturing those uncertainty in stress and strength, uh, estimate uh, characterization, uh, there is a way to directly give the failure probability because factor of safety uh, will give a designer a sense of how far we are there from uh, and how much assurance we have done. But still, it will not give the failure probability. So here, uh, using stress strain model, um, you can see here, the this is a uh, stress model uh, distribution. Here you can say bell shaped distribution we used because uh, mean is mean value is at the center. So 
it is expected that it is it will be a um, bell shaped distribution and then strength the distribution so um, this particular area represents the probability of failure it is a very elegant mechanism to characterize the failure probability which is the which is the key thing for designing a system uh, uh, given the uncertainty whether it is a material property whether it is a uh, engineering design or whether it is a you know interfacing system or whether it is a issues like corrosion and things like that are issues which are um, moving ahead with the time the you can see if a material is corro corroding the strength will come down and stress stresses will increase so so they will come closer and then the probability of failure will be more okay and another one aspect that is fatty and fracture we'll discuss separately these methods also they have evolved over a period of time now uh, basic framework the basic framework what we have here for risk based engineering uh, uh, we, i think uh, it's a very elegant uh, mechanism or framework uh, where first one need to define the problem okay so once definition and the uh, crisp or the accurate definition of uh, statement of problem uh, helps and to have on the complete analysis and complete understanding of the uh, situation or the problem being addressed and here there are two major components one is uh, deterministic component and probabilistic component they interact among themselves at the same time when the when the modeling is complete uh, they form input for integrated risk assessment module that means the probabilistic probabilistic information uh, for example the deterministic component is failure criteria without failure criteria the probabilistic component cannot move so all those in the information about all hardware and other systems that can that has to go from here uh, their margins and all that and finally the probabilistic component will uh, will assess the interaction among various component systems and uh, finally uh, it will give uh, estimates of if it is a faulty or a system level failure probability of the system if it is at the plant level uh, it will give the damage frequency from the plant and deterministic component will uh, will form an input for even sensitivity analysis so that the integration is as complete as possible and in in this integration the simulation also forms part of uh, the assessment once the integration integrated risk assessment is done then there are some set goals and criteria which are uh, which are deterministic goals and criteria and probabilistic goals and criteria so uh, by simulation and all uh, and in fact i'll add one more point the plant simulators if they have a um, physics based component um, uh, strong then then also this complete simulation can be done here and uh, then we have next is uh, special monitoring system so here i would like to point that uh, um, other than the feedback surveillance and all that the prognostic health and health management uh, also forms a very good especially if we are uh, handling a issue which is related to aging management and things like that uh, if a plant is going so what are the component they need they will need extra monitoring additional monitoring to get a confidence it will not fail uh, you know without any warning or this thing so prognostics and health management uh, does form part of risk based engineering only on this chart i have not shown here because it it gets captured in the monitoring and all that you know uh, then we have safety and availability goals finally we came to that the risk goal risk uh, uh, targets are meeting and uh, availability goals are meeting so uh, fine we have met our target okay um, if we have not met then we have to further uh, fine tune our system our analysis and then uh, revisit all all the aspects and again come till we get yes that is final acceptance and induction of change uh, now this uh, chart is applicable for uh, design operation regulation 
and specific issue or specific changes that we are making in the plant you know, for these issues also. So now here, uh, this is the model, basic model. And uh, now various chapters also, uh, what we will be discussing, uh, will be following the uh, core content from this model only. So let us go to, uh, because you know, we require little bit of uh, concept on what is deterministic, what is probabilistic. So our uh, definition, Oxford definition is of uh, deterministic, is believing that everything that happens and must happen as it does and could not have happened any other way. That means, simple, in simple words, if I am designing a plant, I should be able to uh, determine uh, what kind of redundancy we required, what kind of diversity will be required, uh, what kind of single failure criteria will be required and you know uh, that way I should be able to say at the end of the day uh, that my design uh, the risk component is uh, to the acceptable level even though it, it may be a qualitative manner uh, and at the same time the plant will also operate smoothly. So deterministic uh, safety analysis for nuclear plants identif it starts with the identification of potential threat event or uh, potential uh, potential postulated initiating events and uh, it ensures whether the safety goals and criteria uh, they meet uh, uh, by by uh, considering the provision of the safety system okay so uh, what we have done is the, the cambridge definition we have translated into technical do domain actually you know so now uh, if we go further we can see the deterministic safety analysis now uh, since uh, uh, IAEA is a uh, international agency uh, which develops documents on uh, various things and there are some uh, definition which comes from IAEA. So IAEA definition of uh, deterministic safety analysis is analysis using for key parameters single numerical values taking to have probability of 1. What it is telling is very important statement. It says without considering the probability, you assume that whatever redundancy or whatever level of production you have done, they will fail, first level will fail, second also will fail, something like. So what is there to ensure safety uh, and all the three levels together, uh, they should ensure sub sufficient confidence into the leading to a single value of the results. That means. Uh, without any uncertainty uh, point value. So it is a very powerful definition of the safety, uh, but uh, uh, pro probability has a different uh, stand on this. Uh, it gives the failure probability because, um, because always uh, considering that redundant system will, uh, will come and uh, operate um, maybe one in million more. They, uh, they, they will come, but then if they do not come, it is very expensive. So, um, and that is where prob probabilistic and deterministic approach they join hand and uh, they provide a very, uh, very, uh, I would say, uh, realistic and acceptable, uh, realistic and acceptable input for giving confidence into the system. The safety of uh, for that it is an elaboration of the uh, definition itself. Okay, so now against that we have probabilistic risk assessment. Uh, definition of a sort of a probabilistic uh, uh, risk assessment is PRA is an analytical approach to predict the risk from safety critical system by postulating the potential accident scenario. So. Uh, actually, uh, I would like to make one clarification here. Probabilistic risk assessment and probabilistic safety assessment, both are same terms. In uh, somewhere it is used as PSA, that is probabilistic safety assessment. In some places or countries, it is used as PRA. Um, so both are same actually, methodology wise, or, you know, meaning the, this thing. So uh, what it says is consider and the same thing applies to deterministic also. Considering the uh, PIE, it is called postulated initiating events, set of initiating events which are possible and 
prove the uh, perform the analysis and prove that the system is safe. Uh, here, the second thing is in probabilistic risk assessment, the reliability engineering provides the tools and methods for creating PRA model. Actually, um, there is a um, for risk assessment, so to say, the basis is come, comes from reliability engineering methods and principles and all that given the plant data or you know generic data whatever. So, uh, example given what are the major tools, fault tree, event tree, probability distribution, Markov model, Bayesian modeling and of course uh, many more, more tools uh, which comes and uh, enable performance of the analysis. PRA model development and its application for solving real time problem is uh, central to risk based engineering. Actually real, uh, addressing real time problem is not always uh, comes handy. Lot of uh, assumptions are to be made, uh, lot of constraints are there uh, and then um, uh, that, that is where the uncertainty and sensitivity analysis has to be uh, uh, captured. So, uh, and to make the results more credible actually. Okay. So, uh, here we got the probabilistic safety assessment. The major feature of PRA is it is comprehensive structured approach to identifying the failure and uh, uh, conceptual methods and all that is as I said and PRA is performed at three levels. That is level, in fact, it is typically a scenario for uh, nuclear plants. Um, the level one is system analysis. That means all the system, thermal, hydraulic, structural system, they are analyzed. And uh, uh, does it have any uh, uh, adversely affect the core damage? Its frequency is estimated. Level two is, okay, the, there, is a, there, is a, uh, uh, there is a damage in the system. So what is the containment response? Uh, how are uh, the... Um, uh, what is the fre frequency of release, these things are done. Uh, so, the general experience is level 1 risk and level 2 risk. There will be a, uh, you know, uh, a reduction of 10 and level 2 to level 3, there will be further a, a, a reduction of 10 because nuclear plants have a, a containment building. So, consequences in the public domain uh, almost goes to the level of 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the 7 and maybe lower also uh, because, uh, because uh, public uh, is uh, public uh, safety is very important for uh, nuclear systems. So uh, now major post procedural elements of risk based engineering. The major elements are uh, first define the problem. As I said initially if we define a problem in a crisp and clear manner the uh, following jobs become uh, easier and manageable. Objective and scope. What is the objective? Why we are doing? Even if a change application has come in the plant, you want to do some modification and uh, you want to see what is the impact on risk uh, reduction or safety improvement. So, uh, the objective and scope should be very different. And boundary condition. What is the uh, area uh, uh, and what, uh, what are, how the systems, uh, which are the system which have been con uh, considered in this analysis, which are out of the analysis, uh, depth of the analysis, because um, all the modeling and this thing that doesn't require a, um, um, you know, uh, many of the jobs can be done uh, within say, if I have to talk in terms of time, uh, within 15 to 20 days, some might take one year. So uh, this boundary condition definition is very important. And next is uh, quality attribute. Without quality attributes, one cannot characterize or one cannot, um, one cannot be confident what they are doing. doing and how others will consider it credible. So, uh, there are well defined quality, qualitative attributes, uh, especially in PRA and all that. Uh, we, we have to map our, uh, our, uh, our attributes, uh, what we have achieved and all. And we have to, uh, normally regulator would like to see these attributes, whether we, have, whether we are complying this uh, national and international attributes, so that uh, a real time decision can be taken. And as it was told, first step in any uh, thing is uh, initiating event. So you can see here, these elements have come uh, from, from the deterministic analysis uh, and probabilistic analysis. Then safety functions, here uh, 
probabilistic methods they play uh, you can say assessment of safety function fall tree uh, will be used for modeling a safety function then uh, for its quantification we have data and information collection and it has to be converted into reliability estimates and uh, deterministic input also will come uh, because finally a fault tree will be developed when we have the failure criteria and we have the system specifications you know so many input will come here and then the probabilistic modeling uh, proceeds uh, wherein uh, the eventual aim is to give uh, uh, estimate the risk okay and finally risk from various sources uh, systems from various uh, scenario it could be seismic scenario it could be planned normal operation scenario it could be planned uh, so shutdown scenario so from various source is there is called risk integration and till this happens uh, one is not sure whether the analysis is uh, valid or not because including all the scenario possible scenario if some scenario is not included there should be justification why it is not included like suppose somebody can say um, my plant is not uh, operating in a seismic zone fine there is a, there is a, some relaxation but still you have to factor in what is the minimal or acceptable level uh, thing and some references of course and then uncertainty and sensitivity analysis it's a very rigorous exercise in risk based engineering uh, even though it forms uh, often part of pra also but here in uncertainty and sensitivity analysis it, it is it uh, other than the performance it goes to the area of uh, uh, structural or prognostics and health management and then identification uh, characterization and then what are the uh, feedback mechanism sensitivity analysis uh, precipitates the important safety issues then finally it is feedback and this is where phm also enters if i am doing prs pra for a nuclear plant which is a 40 year old the phm will give us input on uh, this uh, analysis will give input which are which are all the places we where prognostics and uh, safety, uh, health management uh, methods are required to be implemented or where uh, typical monitoring will do or typical in service inspection enhance uh, inspe uh, in service inspection will do and finally um, it it goes to the third party or regulator and then finally it is accepted so it is a risk based engineering uh, which provides a very robust framework uh, though it might look like risk informed approach only but the detailings are very elaborate and uh, in some areas it has been seen also that uh, uh, regulators are also happy when you give a holistic solution for giving life uh, uh, extension for a plant uh, something so this has been the experience thank you